What's up guys? We are back for another older NECA Predator review, taking a look today at one of the Predators that I got in that recent haul where it was pretty much, well, mostly all Predators. So today we're taking a look at the AVP Youngblood Predator. This guy comes in the standard style NECA blister card packaging for the Predator line. You can see him there in the big bubble with all his accessories. We've got uh, product shots and a logo down there on the bottom, and then the back has got a write-up for AVP as well as a cross-sell with other figures. So let's do it. Let's pull this guy out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our Youngblood Predator. A bit of an older Predator at this point, but one that I am very interested in just because of kind of the scene that you can recreate with this guy. Because this particular Predator, while he is kind of an example of a type of predator, a young blood predator. He is specifically referencing a predator that is seen in the first AVP movie. So there's this scene where uh, this particular predator is hoisting up an alien, a xenomorph head, on a pike. And that's this guy. So his bio sort of brings that all together, that this, is a, this particular predator is supposed to be the first one that successfully killed a Xeno on Earth. So that's kind of tying in his bio from the from the figure into the movie, into that specific scene, which I think is kind of cool. And it's a pretty it's a pretty cool scene, all things considered, when you're uh, when you're watching that movie, whether you like it or not. Um, so we're going to take a look at all the normal stuff here, uh, articulation and uh, paint and sculpt. But let's get started. Take a look at how this guy moves around. I don't think we're going to be too surprised if you're familiar with predators from this particular era. Uh, he is a little more articulated than some of the older ones, but not as articulated as some of the newer ones. So the head can swivel. He goes back a little bit and he goes down a little bit. And then of course you've got a little bobble side to side. The arms go out and then they'll go forward and backward and you can knock off the plasma caster in the process. You've got a bicep swivel. You've got double jointed elbows, which are pretty nice. You've got rotation at the gauntlet and then you've got ball pegs at the wrist for hinge and swivel and, you know, just bobble around. You've got razor uh, drop action as well. And then we've got an upper diaphragm twist so you can get them to go backwards and forwards, bobble side to side, and then rotate. You've got legs that go out. They kick forward a bit. They kick back. You can rotate up there. We have got double jointed knees, which also rotate at the top of the knee joint. And then you've got the ball pegs at the ankles, which are pretty standard for Predator, so pretty good wide range of motion down there. He does move pretty nicely all around. I'm not really uh, unhappy with how he moves at all. I would, I would have liked to have seen, you know, some just different style joints on this particular figure for the time. But at the end of the day, this guy moves around really, really well, and I don't have too many complaints for that. He definitely does. He definitely does all that I need him to do, and then some. Now, as far as the sculpt and the paint, this guy in particular is very, very similar to another of the AVP Predators. He's really, really close to the Scar Predator. And a lot of this particular era of Predators from NECA, the AVP style of Predators, they share a lot of parts. Uh, I don't have that figure for a references sake, but it's, it's pretty obvious when you're looking at pictures. They're very, very close. Uh, this guy and like the Serpent Hunter and the Elder Predator, they share a lot of parts, which is fine. It's just something to note. This guy, of course, though, when you're looking at him, maybe for the first time, not really understanding what he is, the big thing that instantly jumps out at me is, good lord, this guy is clean. He is almost too clean. And that, that might be one of my gripes with this particular figure is that despite the fact that he's really shiny in that scene in AVP, I do think he is a little too, like, you know, fresh out of the box almost. Like his armor is just just never been used almost. He, he's he's entirely silver. There's no wear on it whatsoever. Uh, and it's just straight, straight, kind of chromed out kind of silver. It's obviously not chrome, but that's what they're going for here with a very metallic, very shiny color, which at the same time does work really well against this yellow and brown skin. It's just kind of odd almost to see a predator with such clean and crisp looking colors, I guess. That said though, I do like this body type. I like the coloring on the skin. The netting is really nicely done. I do like the fact that the armor is kind of new looking. It's still it's just kind of odd. Uh, it's one of those things you don't really think about when you think about it, a Predator figure. They usually seem a little different, a little more battle-worn. You've got uh, kind of rubbery plastic back here for this piece that runs down the spine. You've got the butt flap back here. You've got the the, uh, the, the thigh armor, and then you've got his little doodads on his, uh, on his waist, like the throwing disc kind of thing that's right here. It's not removable. It's just 
part of the belt. And then he's got kind of his loincloth. You do have a sheath down here. And this, I guess, would be considered an accessory because it actually pegs into his, uh, his shin. But I figure you just keep it on at all times anyway. We've got these two big gauntlets over here, which have the, uh, the razor claws that come out of them. And these, you could, I assume, consider them accessories as well. Uh, they just peg in there, so we'll talk about them when we get to accessories. I just figure they kind of complete his look, so we'd have them in there the entire time. And then, uh, of course, we do have a lot of a very mottled type of uh, skin coloring. So the yellow, hints of orange, some brown, and then some really dark blacks on his arms there. So I just like the look. You know, it's not a bad thing that he looks new and kind of fresh out of the box. It's just... It's not what you expect when you think of a Predator, but at the same time, this silver color really, really pops against the skin tones, against the blacks and the browns. So I'm not complaining, it's just a different look. Now from the neck up, this guy is pretty basic, but again, I like what we have here. There is a nice texture to this helmet. It's not removable. It's a what you see is what you get kind of Predator situation. You've got the bluish tint to the visor in there. And then of course you do have the plasma caster up there with him. Uh, it is removable. It's one of the ones that pegs into the two holes on the back. And this is the one thing that actually has a lot of uh, kind of grit and grime to it. Like it's like it's not his, you know, like it's one that he's gotten that's already been used or something like that. So it definitely clashes against the cleanness of the armor. It's just a little dirty. It's got some wear and tear. There's a lot of wash in there. And then, of course, you have the Telltale Predator dreadlocks or the Predlocks, whatever you prefer to call them. So it's an, it's an extension of the clean nature of his armor just at his head. And, of course, he does have a really basic mask, but I think it works well. It's kind of a more classic standard mask, which I certainly don't have any problems with. Now, as far as accessories go, he does have a pretty good spread depending on how you want to classify what an accessory is. There's a few things on this guy that really seem like they just belong on him, regardless of whether he can use them as accessories. So we're just going to talk about them anyway. So for starters, we of course have got the Plasma Caster again. Is it an accessory? I tend to not agree that it is because it's part of him. It's what, What's a Predator without a Plasma Caster? There are very few and far between. So while it is removable, Eh, you know, your mileage may vary on whether you think it's an accessory or not, but it's something that you have extra if you want. We do have these four blades that pop into the gauntlets on each wrist, so there's two on each side. They're nicely sculpted. I like the detail on them. My one gripe, though, is that they are all individually pegged in, and they they just kind of stick in there. You know, it's, it's, it's friction-based, so they have a tendency at times to fall out, bump them the wrong way, and you might end up losing these guys. So it's just a thing to keep an eye out for if you get a hold of this figure or if you've already got him. Uh, it's just one of those kind of annoyances more than anything else. I like the look. They're always going to stay in my figure, but at the same time, I wish that they were the, I wish they were the retractable kind that were built in to the gauntlet itself. We do have this uh, kind of ceremonial almost style dagger short sword down here. You can put it in the holster on his waist and it has a little bit of paint detail. It's got a little claw at the end of the uh, the hilt there. There's some brown and some copper paint on the handle there. And then you've got this really, really interesting blade. I think the blade design is pretty cool. It again, it kind of looks ceremonial almost, but he does have one big accessory, literally and figuratively. And it's the one thing that you need to recreate the scene from the movie. And that's this guy. So we have got the, you know, the kind of telltale accessory for this particular instance of this Predator. We have got the Predator staff with the impaled Xenomorph head on it. And you can see there's all kinds of guts and gunk coming out of there. We've got the, the tip of the spike coming out. And I will say that while I think this is pretty cool, it's implemented kind of oddly. For one, I think it's a little short. Uh, I think it needs to be a little longer because he can't really hold it and it sit on the ground. You know, it can't poke on the ground very well. And it's incredibly, incredibly top heavy. This thing is solid. It's not hollow. Uh, so it's, it's really, really wobbly. You can see that it'll want to bend. And I've seen plenty of instances where this thing has broken just because of the weight or maybe trying to put it into his singular uh, gripping hand there. So it's a cool accessory. There is a great deal of sculpt up here. You know, I can't fault him for doing this because it's really, really cool, but it's, it's odd to use. And it's, it's one where if you're going to hoist it in the air and have him do the thing, it's really only good for a short while because he's really not going to be able to hold it up in the air for too long. And he unfortunately doesn't have two hands to do a two-handed gripping pose. You kind of have to just pose it on there, which is definitely a downside, but I don't really care all that much about a two-handed pose. It's just one of those things that if I could do it, I would do it, but in this case, you can't. 
So this, this is a really cool accessory, but I think implementation leaves a little bit to be desired. So overall, this is still a pretty fun Predator, don't get me wrong. Uh, I very much enjoy the Predators from the first AVP movie. It's not the greatest movie, and I don't think anybody's going to argue with me on that. But I do like some of the designs that come out of it. I do think this Predator is a pretty interesting one from just a look standpoint, because he does look so new and so unused, which is just kind of odd for Predators, especially for Predator toys. They usually have a more gritty look and feel. They look you know, a little dirtier, a little more battle-worn. And this guy is like a brand new recruit almost straight out of, you know, Predator training school or whatever they go through. And he is uh, just ready to throw down, but he hasn't gotten quite dirty yet. So it's interesting, but it's just kind of jarring at times. Otherwise, though, I think it's a pretty solid figure. He does have a couple wonky accessories in terms of how you use them or how things stay in place. But overall, he does have a lot of cool looking stuff. And you can definitely get him into some fun, fun poses, especially with that impaled xenomorph skull. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys Youngblood Predator. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Share, and until next time.